Gunners Collective, back at it, you already know. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh, guard, let me know something. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I said, no something. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I said, let me know something. Order it like a smack attic. You already know what it is. We're back at it. Now, trip out as you can tell by that thumbnail right there. Hey, yes, indeedy. I'm about to write graffiti all over this bus. And I mean, noodle style in direct fashion, it ain't no thing but a chicken wing, man. Don't make me clip your wings so you, I believe you can't fly. Orale! <laughs> R. Kelly. Now, trip out. We're going to get down with it. And what I wanted to talk about today was being dead to your barrio. Your barrio, your barrio, your hood, your turf, your whatever it is you may be, your clubhouse. Um, if you involve yourself in certain situations, you know, the old saying goes, you know what you signed up for. There's rules and regulations to life, ain't they? You know, there's, I can't go nowhere if I ain't got a license. Or an Uber, right? There's certain places and certain things that you can't accomplish or fully accomplish your goals or certain things you can't do if you're not following the rules. And the same thing goes when it comes to turf politics, neighborhoods, barrios. You know, if you're in a barrio, um, and you grew up there and you get jumped into a gang and you proceed as such and you become one of them individuals that's first and foremost about that hood. Well, there's certain rules and regulations you're going to abide by. Now, every hood has different reglas, different rules, regulations, things you must go by, people you can and cannot touch, things you can and cannot do, people you can and cannot look at different, right? You just need to understand the intricacies and the details and to what goes on in that particular neighborhood and set that you're claiming. Now, if it goes deeper and beyond that and you start claiming a group or an organization, well, the rules get a little more trickier and a little bit more stickier. And in that case, what you need to do is really dot your eyes and cross your T's. That's because if you don't, they're going to punch your eye and dot your T. Mm -hmm. One time for your mind. Let that sink in. That's it. Now, trip out. Um, me, myself, growing up in the west side of Merced, uh, for no one that, for anyone that doesn't know about my neighborhood, dead end, um, it's a body like no other, you know. Um, and when I say no other, because there's no other like it, you know. Every body has their different things that they got going on. Some might have bad chicks, you know. What I mean, damn, you got the baddest hyenas in your hood, or some might have bad cars, a lot of car clubs. Damn, you got those got all the rides and shit, homes. Huh? And then these ones over here, they got all the yeah, you know what I mean. My flat to the yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they're doing their thing, but every hood is just a little bit different. Now, my hood, we were known um, to be like family, somos familia. Okay, we were together, we were tight, we were all evolved from homeboys, and it was all our brothers and our sisters and our primos and our primas and our cousins and their cousins, and we'll take your cousins and we'll do something with your cousins, eh? and that's just how it was. Now, at the same time, you know, every neighborhood had their little different thing going on. But I didn't pay no attention to what they had going on. All I was worried about was what we had going on. Things of that nature. You know, and I thought I came into a very good collective. I thought the people that I surrounded myself were the righteous ones. And you know, I can't wolf, I can't sit here and wolf on any single one of my homeboys. Some I don't like, some I got love for, some I love a lot, right? But at the end of the day, if you claim my neighborhood, if you continue to claim the neighborhood, um, then it's all love. It's always gonna be love, at least for me and on my part. Now, what happens in life? When you're a Mexicano or a Chicano, raza, somos raza, right? And you're from a water, especially in California. Well, I'm going to tell you what happens. You know, there's two things that could happen. See. One, you just do your thing, man. You proceed. Hey, you make the right moves, the next move, your best move. Everything works out fine and dandy for you. And all the candy man, shoots and ladders, right? You climb up the ladder, you go down the chute, and everything's good. You know, everything's good. I've seen some veteranos that are in great standings, good standings. Uh, their arms falling off, but they're in great standing still to this day. And then I met a lot of youngsters that couldn't even make it one day in county jail. They done fell all the way off. Burpees, no my, right? They could not, no my, so say no my. They could not do one burpee. Um, I myself was ingrained in the fabric of Merced. I myself was ingrained in the fabric of my barrio. That's all I cared about, man. 
That's all I cared about until I found the Norte. And then I found something I cared about just a little bit more. And I dedicated myself to two. Yes, there was two sides to that story. It's being from the barrio of Westside Mercedes and also being a Norteño. And I didn't say which one I loved more, but let's just say, man, I loved them like no other. More than my family, more than my friends, more than my culture. And at the same time, doing that, I lost myself and I lost everything that I believed in because I believed in an evil. Okay, an evil that was greater than myself. Am I saying it was a bad group? Am I saying that they only did bad and wrong and horrible things? Absolutely not. There was a lot of good we did. Um, I couldn't sit here and write it down, but there was a lot that we did. Let's just put it like a guard. You know, this is my story. I'm going to tell it. Um, one thing I'll say is facts. You know, I loved it like no other. I was down for the hood, down for the water. I'll always have love and respect for dead in the West Side. I'll always have love and respect for the North Day. Am I part of the fabric of that anymore? Absolutely not. Why? Was it by choice? Was I pushed backwards? Was I told, no, 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 you can't come to the hood no more? I was told all these things, okay? There's people every day that tell me, you won't come to the neighborhood. You know, I wiggle, but I wiggle with respect. You know, I'm not coming in trying to disrespect anyone. I'm in, I'm out, goodbye, vamos. Pay no attention to the fat guy that gives the guy an extra C-note at the door so he could slide on by. Bang, bang, money, the root of all evil, it always works. Um, but one thing I do know is facts is when you're from a neighborhood and you love it that much, it's always going to be ingrained in part of your life. You know, I can't live one day I wake up every morning remembering the good times, the bad times, all the times um, of everything that I've ever done. Will I make new memories in the future about my neighborhood? Will I make new memories in the future about the North Daniel cause? One never knows does one. World's different. But one thing I can tell you that is actual, actual facts is that I loved like no other. Okay, I was a born soldado into the barrio. Okay, I come from parents that were from barrios. You know, mother was an 18th Streeter. Oh, you didn't know that? Now you know, right? Father, who was from LA and then moved to Modesto and claimed the south side of Modesto, the deep south. Yes, see, indeedy, I wrote graffiti all over the bus. See, one thing you don't know about the gun is I didn't just start off just doing this. Hey, watch out, I just want to be a gang member because it's cool, it's cool. No, I was born and bred into this, okay? Just like I was born and bred into this, I was pushed and wavered back from it. Now, do I think it's wrong? Do I think it's, uh, it destroys lives? Absolutely it destroys lives. But hey, there's good things that destroy lives too. You know, you can have a perfect family, but how perfect are they really? There's only one perfect weapon that's ever been in this world. His name was Jesus and he's no longer with that because we put nails through his hands. That's it. But that's another story for another place and another book. One thing I can say that got some all shook is how does it feel when you're dead to your barrio? How does it feel being told you can't come back to the hood no more. A hood that you were from before a lot of the people that are claiming it now even knew what was. How does it feel being dead to your homies where they see you in traffic and they look the other way or they look your way? One way or another, um, it's an ugly feeling. And it's a feeling that I went through. See, I've, I've enraptured and encaptured all levels of life when it comes to the gang banging mentality. That's why I could speak on it. See, there's not a lot of individuals that can speak on it. You know, there's a lot of from college right now. Hey, I'm a gang coordinator when I grow up. Or is that right? Have you ever been to a barrio? Spell that three times and say it fast. They sit, nah, 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 nah. You can't do it. Guard, I said you can't do it. Right? And the reason why they can't do it is it's called hands-on, you know, training. It's just like a highly job. You can go to college all you want and say, get that knowledge that you can't get in college. But if you don't have no hands-on training, if you ain't never been there, if you ain't never uh, stepped on a cucaracha, if you ever never uh, went to the backyard and cut a nopale, if you ain't never did these things in the hood, if you ain't never drank out of the manguera, if you ain't never with the torta got your wiggleization on, well, then one thing is for sure, homes, you don't know what it is to be in the hood, to be in projects, to be in low-income housing, to be in barrios, paper, food stamps. Never forget where I came from. Hey man, it be like that sometimes. But it be like this sometimes. It's all about progression. How you progress and how you move out from that. Now, my whole plan in life was ne to never leave the barrio. My whole plan in life was to never get away from the wiggle. I loved the wiggle. I was with the wiggle. Orderly wigglization is real. Orderly. I like the three animals, homie. I was with that program. Anything that gangbanging entailed in any time that I could represent the hood or stand up or shed blood or do what I could to make the progression of my hood that much better and make us garner and gain respect. This see, I was always on the front line. Yeah, I'll sign up for that. I know what I signed up for. 
What are you, 10 years in prison? <laughs> I got that on the toilet. Let's, let's do that, right? Um, but there comes a time in a man's life and a woman's life as well, you know what I mean? Or whatever your pronoun is. There comes a time in that, in, in that life when you need to understand that maybe it's not meant for you anymore. Maybe you've gave all that you can give. Or the army gave all that you can give or all, get all that you can give. I don't know. I'm Mexican. I talk different. But what I do know as facts is I gave the best of me. Only two years later be told, I'm not allowed. I'm dead to them. They didn't want to beat me up. Couldn't put the Mac on me. Did the only thing they could do and turn their back on me. Right? Um, it's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard thing to deal with in life. But in life, you must move on. When you're told by the people that you bled with and bled for and sacrificed so much time and did the struggle and went through the struggle and went through a damn hurricane and a tornado and a flood and you swam through the flood as it to save your brethren. And when you've been through that and when you carry the city on your shoulders and your back, when no one else from your city or your town was representing down south in Southern California throughout the YA system, you let everybody know you were from the Central Valley of the Merced 209 area. Ain't nothing scarier than walking down the street con un pinche ugly mascara with a pit bull terrier. When you were able to do that and no one cares, it's a hard pill to swallow. You know, um, but when you're dead to the own homeboys that, that you care for, that you still got love for, um, you need to be a bigger man. You need to understand that also is part of the game part of what you signed up for. When people tell me, particularly in person, hey, you know what you signed up for? I do. I did then, I say, and I do now. I absolutely do everything with a keen sense of creativity, a keen sense of mind, a keen sense of professionalism, respect, and I know what's up. You know, I portray an image on YouTube. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You know, and everyone thinks, oh, he's a J-cat. He's a character. He's funny. That about they never been nowhere. Don't know nobody. Ain't never did none of that. We don't act like that. We're gangster. We're solid. Check it out, super gangster. You know, I like to have a little fun. That's why I get all the tortas. If you can make them laugh, homes, you don't have to make them cry. You feel me? I'd rather be a lover than a fighter or a fighter that loves. Bang, bang. Either way, I'm going to win. I'm going to win because I'm dictating my own life now. See, I'm doing what I does, cuz. And I know I got homeboys. I know I got homeboys that got love for me, but deep down inside I said, because they're part of something that's bigger than them, they have to do what they have to do. I've had homeboys that fell off, dropped out, you know, stopped gangbanging, just went their own way, took care of their family, moved out of state, did whatever the hell that they chose to do in life. And then they catch up with me on Facebook, on the Instagram hour, and they give me a call and they're like, damn, bro, I got love for you, boy. Yeah, well, why didn't you say that two months ago when I seen you at the dead end store and you tried to shoot at me? Oh, I didn't have love for you then. You know what I mean? Hey, the love stopped. You know what I mean? Where has the love gone? You know, but then the love comes back. Um, and I'm not saying everybody's like that. I'm saying a selected few. Now, when your neighborhood turns their back on you or they feel that you've turned your back on them, um, it's like the old Mexican standoff, homeboy. Orale, why are dirt? Who's going to pull his pistol first? You know, there's two sides to every story. Actually, three. Yours, mine's, and the truth, right? And the truth remains with me because I tell you this, and this is facts. You know, it's not a great feeling. Having been there and I'm living through it. You know, told, hey, you can't come here no more to the store that you once stole the payday candy bar from. I can't say, nah, you're not allowed to talk to my sister anymore. It's already phoned her three times. You can't come over here and get a, a big old tortilla homemade with all kinds of butter on it from my jefita. Can I still get a you know what I mean? The winner is. But one thing I will say is facts. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you didn't like hearing that one, did you, buddy? One thing I can say is facts is um, I'm not happy about it. There's not a lot of people happy about it. But what I'm happy about is where I am in my life. You know, maybe being pushed away, maybe being told you can't, you can't, made me understand that I can do a lot more than just stay in them surroundings. Now, people always talk about on YouTube, I get DMs all the time, messages. Yeah, you think you're bad. You talk all this rah, 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 but you can't go back to your neighborhood. No, but I say I can go to New York. I say I can go to Hawaii. I can go to Alaska. I can go to Toronto, Canada. Well, wait up. I'm an ex-con. I can't go to Toronto, Canada, but I can still wiggle, right? I, there's a lot of places I can go that I never once thought outside of the box and did. And I'm brown. I say, 
can't take that from me. You could take the red bonnie from me, maybe the blue bonnie. You could take the hoo, 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 bulldog up out of me. You could take whatever you want, all the gang related issues that you think are more than anything. But what you can't take away from me is raza, culture, history, brown power, things like that. You can never take away from me. You know, does it hurt being dead to the homeboys in your neighborhood? Yeah. But one never truly is dead to their homeboys in their neighborhood. Even when you're gone and the dirt is thrown on you, the memory shall remain. Everything that you've ever done, which a lot of people say, well, it don't count anymore, but you still think about it, okay? All the details of your stories are ingrained, enraptured, and captured in life, in a silhouette of your life, a shadow of your life. Now, you know, um, you have to learn to make choices as a man, as a grown woman, whatever you are. Like I said, you know who, whatever you are, you have to learn to make decisions and choices, you know, because times and seasons change. You know, when I started this gangster stuff, you know, I was just a youngster on the block with the cuete and a red bonnie when I didn't care about anyone or anything. All I wanted to do was be out in the streets and get my wiggle and westization on. That's all I cared about. I wanted to put on for the hood and put on people for the hood. That's it. Just like I was put on, I'm going to put on. I'm going to keep it going and going and going and going and ordinary. You know what I mean? And I was active and I functioned. And that was what I focused on. But as I got older, seasons changed. Things changed. I met an old lady. Got an old lady. Got a wife. Don't got a wife no more. Right? I, uh, she cheated on me. I said, I can't have a wife anymore. And things. And then you have children and your priorities change. It doesn't mean you lose lack of, you don't have lack of respect for your body, for your homeboys and what they're going through. You know, it just means that the progression is real. Things change in your life, Henty. Straight up. If you can't get with that, don't get with that then. Um, I'm going to tell you a story. Okay. So recently I went back into the neighborhood. You know, I got Tia's that live still right in the core, hardcore part of the neighborhood. You know, R and child stand up. I know some of you are like, oh, I wish I would have got you. Yeah, I wish you would have too. Um, but you didn't. Uh, no disrespect intended, but facts remain. You did it. Now, um, I wiggled in. Normal, no ducking, dodging, hiding, creeping, crawling. What's up, Tia? She said, damn, mijo, get in. What are you doing here? You know everyone don't like you here? I said, look, kid, I don't care. You understand? I've been on this block since I was born. These are the streets that I rocked. You know, I know about, you know, Mimi Lane. And I know about, you know, the Merced Commons apartments. And I, I know about Orange Childs and 10th and 11th Street and 12th Street and Mac Park. You know, back when Mac Park, the McNamara Lynch Mob had it on boom. Way before the boys. I know about everything. So there's nothing anyone could tell me to defer me from coming to my hometown or walking the block to which I was raised. Now, I understand if a bullet whistles past me, that's how I'm going to talk. But bullets, bullets well, whistle past everybody. Um, and I was approached. Okay. I thought... I don't know. I'm a my also, right? I, I got to keep it real. You know, I should have known better, but I thought for no other reason, I'm going to walk to the neighborhood store, the dead end store. <laughs> what an idiot, right? I thought, hey, I'm going to record some footage for YouTube and, you know, I'm going to slap people in the face, basically, you know, people that, that hate me and that don't like me because they think I'm a bad look or they think I've said too much or whatever the case may be. I think I'm going to do that. Um, and two youngsters got at me, man. And they got off. Okay. It's a story that I didn't tell when it happened immediately, um, but they got off, right? Um, with no hesitation, okay? And I respect them. M Street Stand Up did that. Now, uh, I felt bad, not because they jumped on me or whatever. That was real quick. Hey, what's up? This is the way fuck you. Norte, okay, yeah, buster, drop out. You're, you're not, a, you know what I mean? You're, you're a punk and all this, this and that. And, uh, you know, I was like, wow, the same people that I bled for, that I fought for, you know, could do this to me. But I knew what I had coming. I had it coming, I guess. You know, I made the wrong, I made the next move, my wrong move. And they didn't call me a buster. They called me a D.O. But uh, um, I'm just taking it back. You know, it just, just things make me think, you know. And, and as this happened, they jumped in their little car. They wiggled out. Oh, we beat them up. I could hear them screaming. We got him. We got him. And I jumped up and I went and bought my pack of frajos for my tia and bought me a beer. Um, and I walked back leaking a little bit and what happened me boys? What do you think happened? I took a walk to the dead end store. We <laughs> got what this got me from M street, right? Um, that was it. Um, but it made me reflect and think. And I thought about it all night as I was drinking my little 40, my little Mickey's. I got to thinking, um, wow, after all these years, 
You're not invited back into your neighborhood. You're not allowed. You know, you're dead to your hente now. How does that make you feel? You know what it said? I'm alive, humps. I'm alive to the world now. See, when I was from my body, that's all I cared about. You know, when I was from the group that I was from, that's all I cared about. I didn't see past that linea. I didn't see past that. I didn't care about nothing outside of that. I didn't care about leaving Merced only to go to Molesto, to Palladium, or Fat Cats back in the days. I didn't care about anything other than going to Fresno to hunt some Fresno Bulldogs to shoot at or to go to Atwater to stomp some heads in. This is all I cared about. This is all the wiggle and tail for me. I didn't see outside of that. And now I'm alive. See, now I go places, meet new people, and have a great time. I'm very aware of my surroundings. I understand people don't like me, and that's fine. I don't like a lot of people, but one thing I am is a social person, and I'm very eager to meet the raza and pay attention to the ones that need the help, and I also need the help. Education, I don't rock in front of you. I don't rock in back of you. I rock beside you, gente. That's facts. So how does it feel being dead to your own neighborhood? It doesn't feel good. If you see my face, you see me smile, you see me laugh, I'm not in the best of spirits at all times because you got to understand that these are the people that I truly gave my life to. I was truly willing to lay down my life for or lay a life down for them, to which I did at one point. Um, I did my time for the crime and I'm out. Um, it's just very unbecoming of a story. You know, I could sit here and talk all day about it about the certain feelings I have. Sometimes I'm like, man, I don't care. Forget them fools. Them fools that never mean nothing to me. But deep down inside, I know I'm lying to myself. And I can't lie to the gente, the raza, because you guys deserve the realness when I say uh, it doesn't feel good. And now for any of these guys that sit here on YouTube and bicker back and forth and want to argue, hey, nobody's invited back to their neighborhood homes. They don't want you with, your, with their open arms. No one can go. You can go, but you can't flow. You feel me? Let's just keep it real. Um, that's facts, you know, but being dead to your own homeboys, you need to acknowledge it and understand that one day them same guys that are saying that you're dead to them will be dead to the other ones. And if the beat goes on and the beat goes on and the beat goes on, it doesn't mean they're doing the wrong thing. It's an upsetting thing and an unfortunate thing, but Hey, like everyone says, you know what you signed up for. It's just part of the game. Now it's time to live. Gente. Now it's time to live. Do I promote uh, uh, dropping gang ties. Do I promote getting away from your body? Do I promote that? Nah. I promote you being you, but staying brown. And sprinkle the woods, brother. What about coffee? Yeah, we promote coffee too. Orale. Shout out to Folgers. You know, for the white guys. And the brothers, man. Um, every hood is different. Every turf is different. Every body is different. I promote unity. I promote rasa. I promote real and facts. And that's it. If you hate me for that, hate me. I say, it doesn't matter. I'm going to continue to do what I does. Um, if deep down inside you're like, that's a real one right there, but you know, he's just in a, a, a um, an unfortunate, you know, circumstance where it's all bad, you know, and, and I understand, you know, I've deemed people bad, you know, I've had people, you know, hit, um, and, and the same has happened to me, you know, I've been jumped on and, and, and spit at and called all types of derogatory names. Um, and at the end of the day, you know what you sign up for anyways. How does it feel with your homeboys turning their back on you? Um, who truly turned their back on who? That's the question. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get every single thing that you want coming to you. This is some of the realest illest I ever spoke on. And these are all facts, man. I don't need a sugarcoat ad, preservatives, or nothing. Go out there and get it for your familia. I got to get it for mine. That's why I'm dressed like this. I say, I'm going to go do a poster like this. Nah, I'm just kidding. Sounds good. Uh, Canseco or Mike McGuire. I don't like either one of those putos. They're both assholes. Ricky Henderson. Stand up. You know what it is. Go out there and get it, man. Hit me with that like and subscribe one time. There's a notification bell. Lick it, touch it, pet it, massage it, whatever it takes. But make sure that you tap in every day because I drop spills daily. You already know what it is. The Raza has been rocking with me since day one. Man, thank you so much. For those of you that don't like me, you truly hate me, you can't go back. Ah, 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 hell nah. You can't go back to your hood. Well, then hit me with the thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. And I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Yay, yay. You already know what it is. The gun gun. This is it. Bang, bang, man. Let's bring people together. The Raza.